Well, welcome to worship at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Wherever you find yourself this day and whenever you are coming and worshiping with us, know that as a community that we are called to walk with one another down life's path, that we all might experience the goodness and grace of God as we walk together. If you are worshiping with us for the first time and feel comfortable, let us know in the comments that you are worshiping, and we'll make sure to offer a warm, hospitable welcome to you. If you are joining us live for worship, and you are in the St. Cloud area, today is the day that we typically lift up our graduating high school seniors, as well as our preschool families. And we were thinking about how to celebrate this year in this time of COVID-19 and have decided to do a parking lot parade. <laughs> so what does that look like? Well, preschool families and high school seniors will be parked a safe distance away from one another in the Bethlehem parking lot. They will have tables out or they'll even have their cars decorated. Congregation members, you are invited to drive through the parking lot on a marked out path honking, waving, and letting our kids know how much you love and support them during this time. What we are asking you to do as a community is to come all at the same time. That's 1 p.m. today, Sunday, May 10th, and join the parade. Do you have questions? Well, if you do, ask them right now in the comments, and we will be sure to answer and clarify those for you today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join our hearts in prayer. Lord God, walk beside us down the many paths in which we travel in life. As we gather this day, keep us mindful of the paths our neighbors are walking, both near and far, that we might reach out and be a blessing to others with the same grace compassion, and mercy that you've shown us. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. So, families with children, now is the time if they have stepped away and are not worshiping with you to call them back because it is, a, it is time for another Chad and Matt adventure as we introduce the gospel reading today. I found treasure map. What? I was going through some old files at Bethlehem and I came across this. 
It's a treasure map. Bethlehem's treasure. No way. Oh, do you know how rich we're gonna be? Do you realize what we could do? We have to go right now. Come on, let's go. Matt, look, look, oh, it's the temple. We found it. Whoa, the temple. Chad, look, security cameras. We have to move stealthily. We use our super ninja secret moves. They'll never see us. Excellent. Let's go. Let's go. together a series of complicated algorithms to open this impenetrable door. Carry the one and yes. Looks pretty spooky. I don't know. It's a little bit what? too what? empty in here. What's the map say? What's this part right here? What does that say? Treasures guarded by miniature guardians. Miniature guardians? Well, what, what does that mean? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. Let's go. It says the treasure's close to here, but whoa, weird. Look how small everything is. Miniature guardians, what? Let's, we must be close. Let's look around. Man, I think the treasure is right in this door. No way. Matt, miniature guardians, run! We lost them. Yeah, I think we're good. Jeez, small guardians. They're vicious. Cool. Okay. Hey, Matt. Whoa. I think this is it. I think it is. Treasure is behind this door. We finally found it. Dude! What do you think's inside? Uh, I don't know. Well, let's open it up and see. Whoa! 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 The treasure. Read me a 
story. Welcome back from Matt and Chad's adventure. My name is Jenny Vonderhaar and I am the director of the Early Childhood Center here at Bethlehem. One of the things that we do each year is we have a special Sunday where we bring the preschoolers and their families and the congregation together to celebrate pre preschool Sunday. And part of that is sharing some of the things that we do in the preschool. And one thing we do every week with our preschoolers is have chapel time. So we take them to the sanctuary and we use that treasure that we just saw Matt and Chad find, the love box. And inside the love box, we always have a Bible. The preschoolers will tell you there's a small one, a medium one, and a large one. And in there, we share stories with the preschoolers. One of the stories that I always like to start out the year with is the story where children went to go visit Jesus. And when they got there, the people that were with Jesus said that they couldn't see him, that he was too busy. And when Jesus heard this, he said, no, let the children come. And they did, and he blessed them because Jesus always has time for people and for children. And one of the reasons that I really like this story is because I think it represents what's happened here at Bethlehem for many years. The congregation has remained dedicated and committed to letting the children come. And on behalf of myself and the staff that's here, um, we feel like we are given a treasure every day. So thank you um, to our families who bring their children here and entrust us with their very special treasures um, and to all of the people that help and support this program. Thank you. This story is called God's House. Jesus taught his disciples many things. Don't be sad or worried, he said. Believe in God and in me. God's house in heaven is so big that everyone can have a room. I'm going there to get your rooms ready. Later, I'll come back to take you to God's house. You know the way to where I'm going. Thomas and Philip looked confused. What way do you mean, they asked. Jesus said, I'm the way to know God. Because you know me, you know God too. I've taught you about the life with God and good things God wants you to do. Pray, ask me for anything, and I'll help you do it. Thomas and Philip smiled. We can follow you and do what you ask us to do. You are a way to heaven. We can live in God's house too. Today's reading is the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. On the night that he is to be arrested, Jesus shares final words with his disciples. As the one through whom God is known, he promises to go before them and act on their behalf. The reading begins at verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, 
and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Every year during Christmas time, in this church and in many churches across the country, kids and adults will put on costumes and play the roles of biblical characters. It's a fun way to remember really any story and it's tradition. So obviously we're going to keep doing it. But I do wonder something. I wonder if dressing up and playing a character like this makes it easier or harder to see, sense, and experience the presence of God in our lives as we get older. What's your image of God? How do you picture the biblical story? Is it full of characters that, well, look like this? Because if it is, well, how can you possibly see this story as relevant and intersecting your life in meaningful ways? In today's gospel, we have taken a little step back in the order of things. We are still celebrating the season of Easter, but today's story takes place before Jesus dies. He is talking to his disciples about a time when he will not be with them. And he is giving them assurance and he's giving them peace of mind that even though he will not be physically present, that they can still be near to him. And this conversation Jesus is having with them, well, it just brings up all kinds of questions. And so as Jesus is talking, his disciples ask, Jesus, what do you mean you are going to the Father or to God? And what do you mean by saying that we will know the way to the place you are going? We don't know how to get there. What do you mean when you say that you and the Father are one? What does God look like anyhow? Asked Philip. <laughs> this kind of talk is confusing, but here's the central point of what Jesus says. Do you want to know the essence of God? Do you want to be close to me, even though I am not able to be physically present with you? Then follow in my way, the way of unconditional love, the way of forgiveness, the way of mercy and compassion and peace, and you will find me there. And you will know God, and God will be more than just an abstract idea, more than a costumed character, more than just old superstition. So what does God look like? Well, according to John's gospel, God looks like the way of Jesus. And what does that look like? Well, it looks like genuine love that is shared with anyone and everyone. You can see that in your life. Let me show you. Well, we're with uh, John and Melanie Halter here. And uh, as we've been thinking about this gospel story and when we follow in the way of Jesus, the way of, of grace, compassion, mercy, and love, we actually find God present in our lives in ways that we never thought really possible before. And that's a really, nice sentiment. It's also really confusing. So I've asked them to share just a little bit of their personal story to help put some flesh on on this today. And, and so Melanie, if we can start with you, can you just do a quick intro of, of you, John, and, and just where has your life been recently? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm Melanie, husband John. We have four kids. Um, that all attend, attend Bethlehem, and about a week ago, um, our youngest daughter, Claire, who is um, six, almost seven, um, she has epilepsy, and so she started to have a seizure in the middle of the night, and in the past, we've been able to kind of contain her seizures or stop her seizures, but 
this particular time, um, her emergency medication wasn't working. And so um, we had to call 911, um, and which is scary in itself. You just never know, you know, what the emergency room will, will bring in this time. And um, I rode with her um, to the hospital, to the emergency room. And while in the emergency room, it got to be um, pretty intense. She couldn't, she couldn't breathe. And so um, they looked at me and said, if you have somebody to call, you, you need to call and they need to come now. And so um, I was kind of texting with John back and forth and sending pictures and, and said, now's the time to come. And he um, got to the emergency room and um, everything just seemed to be kind of going wrong. And they finally got her, her breathing stabilized uh, and her seizures a little bit under control. And she was airlifted to um, St. Cloud Children's Hospital in St. Paul. And so we rushed as fast as we could to St. Paul, um, watched her get um, on a ventilator. And I mean, her little body was so still and all this kind of happened in the middle of the night. So I think by the time we kind of got settled, it was maybe, I don't know, maybe five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. And, and when this all first kind of started, I'm in a prayer group and I just posted in the prayer group, I'm like, ladies, I need prayer and I need it now. And, um, had a lot of people and that's kind of a private is a private group and and then when we kind of got settled I just had so many things spinning in my head and I didn't tell them at all I was doing this and I just left the room to kind of compose myself and went in a waiting room and just kind of went on um, Facebook and did a Facebook live and just um, asked for prayer and, and tried to express how grateful I was for all of the many people that basically saved our daughter's life and just kind of um, left it at that in hopefully a place of gratitude and, and a place of, um, of prayer. And then um, I guess John can kind of go from there, I guess. Yeah, so, so John, I guess the question is, so, so Melanie put this out, people responded. I mean, a lot of people responded and you were able to get well, tell me what happened. I mean, I mean, how many responses did you get? And, and and really what I'm looking for is when you were getting those responses through Facebook, through text messages, through phone calls, through through whatever, what did that what did that feel like? I mean, what what was that for you guys? Um, it was humbling. Um, obviously, we went through a very scary kind of traumatic experience there and you know, maybe I didn't realize it until you're in it that you need that faith circle, you need that support system to get through something like that. So, like, it's two in the morning, one in the morning, um, and, and we're scrambling, we're leaving the house. We left our three other kids in the house with little more than a word, uh, and we knew that our support system was to pick up the pieces. Um, the support system is, you know, Melanie had some informational updates on Facebook that literally hundreds of thousands of people were praying for our family and for Claire. Uh, uh, people were reaching out uh, individually with messages and bringing food over to the house to help grandma and grandpa watch the kids. Uh, you know, without that support system uh, and that kind of power of prayer, I don't know that we'd have gotten through it. But I, I shared with a couple of people, a number of people, that you go through ups and downs emotionally to an experience like a number of times during my low point, I would I would go to some of those messages and comments and voicemails and just kind of use those to kind of help build myself personally back up. And I think the rest of our family did that. I know our kids back at home, um, we talked to them frequently and we saw them go through their ups and downs and we saw them, uh, you know, respond to that outpouring of support and concern for our family. It was truly humbling and needed at a time like this. I don't think we often realize just how big a deal it is to be present for one another. When I think about the biblical story as a whole, it's a story about God wanting to be involved with and present to creation. Jesus' ministry is all about being present with people, especially those who find themselves not being cared for emotionally, spiritually, and physically. One of the last things that Jesus says in the gospel that we just read today 
to his followers is this. Listen, the one who believes, that is, trusts in me, will also be able to do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. <laughs> so tell me, do you believe that? Or do you say to yourself, oh, that can't be me. That's not who I am. I can't measure up to that. Well, you really miss the mark when you make the story of your faith, the story of Jesus, the biblical story, into an intellectual exercise about incorrect belief and correct belief, and fail to see that it's a way, a movement, a lifestyle that addresses the deep human need to be seen, to be cared for, to be in a relationship, to be loved. Unfortunately, it's often in the midst of your hardships when you see your need for God's love and mercy so clearly. It's often in the low points of life when you understand just how powerful it is to be seen and noticed by another. It's often when you are at your worst that Jesus' words become more than just nice sayings as you experience the presence of God through the care and support of your neighbors. Sometimes it takes a pandemic to help us see this. Hear the good news today. Do you want to know the essence of God, Jesus asks? Well, then look to my way, the way of love, grace, and mercy. And when you do, and when you practice these things, the world experiences my presence, God's presence. And there is healing, hope, and peace. And it doesn't matter who you think you are or what you think you're capable of doing. That's the way of God, Jesus says. So no matter where you find yourself today, whether it's a high or a low, no matter what public display you are trying to put on for others, know that you are seen and that you are loved as you are for who you are by a God who calls you to do likewise for everybody that you meet. This is the good news that we hear today. Amen. this day that the church is not a building, but it's people following in the way of Christ. The prayers that you offer, the phone calls that you make, the Zoom meetings that you have with your family and friends, the texts that you send, the encouraging, uplifting messages that you give through Facebook, speak of the way of Christ. You are the church. Thank you for what you do. And thank you for supporting the many ministries that have transformed in this time to be online. 
we appreciate and need your financial support to make all of this possible. We can never minister in the way that we do without your support. At this time, we receive our tithes and offerings and hear an offering of music. Gather this day as the people of God. We pray for the church, for the world, and for all people who have needs. Almighty God, send your guiding spirit to help unite your church on earth, to heal its wounds and to mend its brokenness, that it may clearly reflect the kingdom of God, welcoming all in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as followers of Christ, open our eyes to see the needs of the world and move us as your servants to do your will. Wherever there are hungry people, help us to give food. When people feel helpless and oppressed, give us the courage to speak out. In places that are torn apart by war, help us to work for peace. And whenever intolerance is practiced, Help us to treat others as your children. In this time of pandemic, help us to look out for those who are suffering in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give healing to all those who are sick, either in body, mind, or spirit. Come to the aid of those who call on you this day. Today, we especially remember before you, Salva Sirka, Lillian Johannes, Jake Rodriguez, Bonnie Larson, Terry O'Hara, Lauren Magsum, Jolene Perkins. We pray for Allie and Aria Hammond, Darlene Koch, Claire Halter, and those names that we speak in the silence of our hearts. Gracious God, grant those individuals named and unnamed healing, even if they cannot be cured. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who are grieving this day. We especially remember the Hartung family as they mourn the loss of Greg. 
Give them comfort and peace in the midst of, their, of this great loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all graduating seniors this day, that as they are experiencing much loss in their own lives and the uncertainty of this time, that you would guide them and help them to remember that no matter where they go or what they do, that you walk with them and their faith community supports them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All this and whatever else you see that we need, we pray to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Abide in God's peace. Thanks be to God.